Oh boy, all right, it put the wrong camera on, but I'm going to turn it around, bear with me. Let's see how it looks. It's gonna be difficult. I think I got it. I hope you can hear me. Uh, anyways, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Adrian. Um, we're going to do 60 minutes of kind of vinyasa style yoga. Um, I like to go pretty slow, so hopefully that's good for the people watching. Um, but anyway, wherever you are, um, hopefully you have some type of mat or just a clear space. Uh, if you have a blanket um, that you like to use to pad the knees or to scoot on your bum to prop you up a little bit, grab that now. Uh, additionally, if you have something that looks like this, you can have a designated yoga block, fitness block, or maybe a stack of some sturdy textbooks. Those work too. Anything that you could place your hand on just to bring the floor closer to the rest of your central body um, so you're not straining too much to be over flexible. Wherever you are, I'm going to ask you to join me a nice comfy seat. Um, I'm going to grab my blanket and just hold it and place it like I suggested under the seat. You can see I got a couple inches of height off that and allows the knees to relax down towards the floor a bit more, the hip flexors to relax hopefully for you as well if you're joining me with the blanket. Um, so I'm going to choose to close my eyes. I invite you to do the same if that uh, is a peaceful step for you, but there's no pressure if you don't enjoy having your eyes closed. Um, you can rest your hands face up. How about today on the thighs or the knees? You can have nice bent elbows loose. Let's all shrug the shoulders up to the ears, squeeze everything up, and with an exhale, release everything down, let the weight of the arm bones. Create some space between the ears and the tops of the shoulders. Do that again. This time I'll cue an inhale, shrug up. And exhale, roll the shoulders down and back. Release. One more deep inhale into the belly. Shrug the shoulders, hold at the top. And exhale, roll them back and down. I like to kind of wiggle in my seat to feel grounded. Now, we'll try our hand at a little bit of stillness, keeping the eyes soft, bring your attention towards the belly button area of your belly, and see if maybe you can draw gently the abdomen back towards the line of the spine. This might encourage you to sit up a little bit straighter, and maybe, like me, You'll feel your hands creep closer towards your hips, away from, away from your knees, just as a reaction to the lengthening spine. And although you are tightening the belly a little bit, you're still breathing, still easy going. And then bring your attention to the very top of the head See if you can envision as if a gentle string is encouraging the head upwards towards the ceiling, towards the sky. And quickly checking in down with the belly button. Did you loosen up? Did you feel the low ribs maybe flare out? By drawing that in, you're discouraging the bend of the spine, not in any painful or controlling way, just gentle encouraging the straightening of the spine. And lastly, maybe feel a gentle tuck of the chin down towards the breastbone, the sternum. And this will straighten and lengthen the back of the neck. So let's just take the 20 seconds, just quiet, easeful breathing. 
can stop talking for a bit, but just follow your breath in and out through the nostrils, noticing the belly and the chest rising and falling. going to beckon you back. Sometimes the hardest thing we can do is be still and quiet. But after a while, I can feel really good. So I'm very sorry drawing me back was disturbing. Okay, now we're going to start moving. So we'll just start, drop the chin down towards the chest a little bit more so you feel stretch on the back of the neck and then start to roll it. Let's go to the right. And we'll stop around the shoulder, letting the ear guide the head towards that shoulder. And then we'll let the head rock back, the chin extending up towards the ceiling. And we'll go to the left, allowing the left ear to hover over the left shoulder. Nice right side neck stretch as we do this. And then I'll complete the circle, allowing the head to drop all the way back down to center. And then we'll, of course, go the other side, other direction. So now rolling the head towards the left, allowing the left ear to rest over the left shoulder. <sighs> Rocking the head back towards center, chin up, neck stretching. Rolling towards the right, right ear over right shoulder, left side, neck stretch. And make the circle complete, roll the chin down towards center. Gently lift the chin up. And we got a nice neutral head, we'll look to either side a few times. And we'll come to rest the center. Take both wrists. Uh, Weave them together, weave your fingers together, make a nice basket. And all we're going to do is stretch the palms of the hands forward. As you do this, work to straighten the arms. And then you can also bring a nice ooh, curve to the back while still pushing the palms forward away from the face. We'll lift the hands up overhead. Trying to straighten the arms, maybe look up. Engaging that belly, feeling a nice, long, strong spine. And exhale, shake out the hands. Now weave the fingers the opposite direction. Maybe you went for the comfortable position the first time. Do the uncomfortable or unnatural feeling position with the opposite thumb on top. Well, again, stretch the hands forward, working to straighten the arms, and you go, go straight into that hunch, really. But as you do it, still work to draw the belly in, creating a nice C curve with the spine, allowing the head to drop a little. Inhale. Exhale. On the inhale, raise the palms, still face up towards the ceiling. Engage the belly, feeling the spine raising out of the pelvis. And exhale, shake the hands out. We'll do a nice gentle twist. So Crossing to your right, place the right palm behind you, left on the right knee, the left palm, right knee. And you can stay where you first landed. And we'll just take a few breaths to settle in. We're not very warmed up in the spine yet, so this isn't going to be your biggest, deepest twist, but maybe you start to look towards your right shoulder and over it. your attention back to your belly. Did you let the belly collapse? Did you let the spine 
collapse. See if you can draw back up towards the center. Keeping breathing. And we'll switch sides. So now we have right palm, left knee, left palm behind you, just as a nice kickstand straighten the spine. Belly's in, but not, not like a cement block, not falling, just supportive. Breathing. Maybe you would like to take your gaze over the left shoulder. All right, untwist, unravel. Remove any props underneath you if you had any, and meet me all fours. You're going to place the knees underneath the hip bones. Palms underneath the shoulders, spreading the fingers wide, trying to make a lot of contact between the mat or the floor and the knuckles, the palms themselves. And we just have a nice neutral spine, so that means straight from the pelvis, through the shoulders, through the neck, through the crown of the head. In theory. And we're going to break up the neutrality. We're going to allow the belly to dip the head and the tailbone, go towards the ceiling. Breathing in, and on the exhale, push the floor away, curve the spine in the opposite direction. Draw the belly in towards the spine again. And we reverse, belly dips, tailbone and head up. Inhale, exhale, press the floor away. Exhale, belly in, the jaws. Two more at your own pace. Remember to breathe with each grand movement. And just waking up the spine. So eventually maybe we can do a deeper twist at the end of the class. All right, coming back to neutral, maybe you shake the hips side to side. You're wagging your tail. And we'll come to stillness. So we'll sweep the right arm up, looking up, we're trying to stack the right shoulder over the left, press the left, left palm into the floor, and we'll bend the arm and swing it underneath you. So you're laying your right shoulder on the ground, threading the needle. Right cheek goes to the mat. Have a nice bent left arm to support you. We feel a gentle twist. Couple breaths here. And we'll press into the left hand. Bring the weight back into the left hand, sweep the right arm up, and we'll place it back down. This time, left side, sweep the left arm up, stacking left shoulder over right, right palm presses into the mat. Inhale and exhale. Scoop the arm underneath you. This is the left arm. And bring the left shoulder onto the ground. Left cheek on the mat. This time we feel a gentle twist to the right. We're working to try and keep both hips drawing back in space while keeping anchored on the shoulder, the left shoulder. And press with the right palm for a little resistance. I'll take three breaths here. in the right palm, sweep the left up into the air and replace the left palm. Do a couple of those spinal bends, cats and cows. Just to reset. And we'll tuck the toes. You're gonna press the palms, engaging the belly, press those palms on the floor and lift the knees only an inch off the ground. Now we're gonna warm up the core. Maybe you rock forward and back. Definitely breathe. And we'll release the knees down. You can untuck the toes, sit back onto the heels. 
Relax a little bit. Let the belly breathe. And we'll go in for more and long. So tuck the toes again, press the palms into the mat, engage the belly, spread the shoulder blades across the back and lift the knees off the ground. Breathing. I'm gonna ask you to walk. Right hand forward, left foot forward, left hand forward, right foot forward. So we're in a little bear crawl now. Right foot back, left foot back, oops, left hand back, left foot back, right hand back. Back to center, hands and feet and knees side by side. We're still hovering, arms are probably starting to warm up and shake. Take three more breaths here, hovering. And release down to the knees, release the toes, press back into a child's pose. So I'm gonna widen my knees so my belly, my spine can fall between the knees. Extending the fingers and the hands straight forward and allowing the head to rest down. Maybe the forehead finds the floor, maybe it doesn't. And you can choose to bring the elbows down or can engage the arms to keep them lifted. It's up to you. Maybe close the eyes. All right, coming back into our tabletop this time. We're gonna tuck the toes, but instead of using our core to hover and strengthen, we're just gonna lift the hips up and back, finding down dog for the first time. So similar action, nice flat spread palms, pressing into them so we don't dump our weight into the wrist. Working to rotate the upper arm bones towards center. And drawing your hips up and back. So you might have nice bent knees, heels off the ground. Just shake the head, loosen it up, just let it hang. And you're looking maybe between the two feet behind you. Take three breaths here. Working to draw the belly back towards the spine. On the exhale, still pressing into the hands. Still feeling the hips draw back and up. On your next inhale, we're going to look forward and just step up to the front of your mat, finding your forward fold. So your hands might be all the way up here. Maybe you work to straighten, I mean to bend the knees, the exact opposite, bend the knees, and allow the torso to drape over the thighs, maybe the fingertips or the palms raise the floor, and rock back and forth playfully distributing the weight to the toes and then back into the heels, seeing what center or what stability could feel like by going to both extremes. And let the head be heavy to guide the spine to straighten. And if they're not already bent, bend those knees, sweep the arms up and roll up. We're gonna bring the hands up overhead. Maybe they touch, maybe look up at them. Inhale at the top. And exhale, you can bring the hands down to your center to rest in front of the heart. Maybe closing the eyes again. Take a few just quiet breaths. If you'd like to set an intention or a purpose for this hour-long practice today, feel free to do so. We won't delay too long. So let the eyes open, sweep the arms out and up, look up, inhale. Exhale, bending over the legs, forward fold. Inhale, walk the hands up to the shins, straighten and extend the external spine. Exhale, fold, plant both palms. Step the right foot back, then the left, meeting in plank. 
spreading the shoulder blades, pressing the palms, engaging the belly, feeling the top, the backs of the knees going towards the ceiling. I'm going to drop the knees, bend the elbows back towards the hips rather than out, and lower the chest and the chin down, keeping the seat high. Lowering the whole belly down, we'll scoot forward through the palms and do a little baby cobra. Breathing. I'm going to press down to the tops of the foot if possible. I'm going to engage the two shoulder blades together, pinching them in the center of the back. You feel the shoulder blades rolling down the back, collarbone spreading. And lastly, engage the low belly to protect the low back. Okay, release the forehead down, tuck the toes, pressing into the palms, bend the knees, bring the seat back to the feet, and then lift the hips up, finding down dog. So we're usually not gonna stay in that baby cobra very long, but just so you can feel some different sensations, little cues for when we go through a little faster. Next, inhale, look forward, bending the knees. And we'll step up to the top of the mat again, even forward fold. Extend the spine, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Pressing with both feet, sweep the arms up. And exhale, hands through heart center. Hands out and down by the sides. Collar bones broad. Shoulder blades pinching together on the back. Belly engaged. Kneecaps drawing up so you feel the legs engage. Feel the glutes tighten. Other side, inhale, sweep up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift forward. Exhale, fold this time. Left foot steps back, then right to meet in plank. Breath here. On the exhale, bend the knees, lower the chest and chin, gazes forward, the seat up. Pull forward, finding that baby cobra. Retuck the toes, hips back, child's pose, and then down dog. Couple breaths here. On the third, look forward and step up to the front of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, press into the feet, sweep upright. Exhale, hands through the heart, center, down by the sides. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, different. This time, step the right foot back and allow the right knee to find the mat. You can untuck the toes. We're just going to walk the hands up onto the left thigh. So I'm actually gonna correct myself a little bit. I'm gonna draw the two knees to be more into 90 degree angles. So I'm very upright. This might be a nice stretch just on the right leg. I'm gonna work to bring the two hips in line by drawing the left hip back in space, maybe pressing the right forward. Engage the belly. Hands can stay on the hips or we can sweep them up. Few breaths here. Maybe you look up towards the hands, engaging the legs to keep nice and steady. This is very difficult, even though we're not moving. I'm gonna bend the arms and cactus them out, drawing the collar or the um, shoulder blades together on the back. Gaze is up, feeling the breastbone. Look up towards the ceiling. And I'll extend the arms up, sweep the arms down to meet the floor, tuck the back toe, lift the knee up. So we're in a nice low runner's lunge here and you're gonna rock back and forth. So this is a good chance to grab your blocks or books if the floor seems uncomfortably far away. So now I have a much longer straighter spine. Can actually feel the stretch in my right hip flexor. We'll come to stillness. We're going to plant the right palm into the floor of the block, sweep the left arm up, look up, twisting to the left, and 
down, sweep the left arm down. We'll replace the knee on the mat. We'll marinate here for a second in a slow bent leg runner's lunge. And then draw the hips back, working to straighten the left leg, coming to half split. Now we'll marinate here. Again, working to draw both hips back or both hips into, into one line by drawing the left hip back, right hip forward, and you should feel a lot of sensation in the back of the left leg. Now we'll bend the left knee, look forward, find that runner's lunge, stretching the right hip flexor, and exhale, move the hips back, half split. Inhale, forward, lunge, exhale. Absolutely. Inhale, lunge. Tuck the back toes. Press into the both the two the palms. And we're going to step the left foot back to meet the right and plant. Bend both knees to find the mat. Sit back on the heels. Take a second. If you have blocks in the way like I did, I'm just going to move them. Meet in plank again. Bend the knees. Lower the chest and chin. Look forward. Inhale to baby cobra. Tuck the toes. Hips back. Hips up. Down dog. Look forward. Steps up. Bring the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale forward. Inhale, press up to the feet, sweep all the way up. Hands to center. Do it again. Hands up, inhale. That's a full. Inhale, halfway lift, look forward. That's a full. This time, step the left foot back. Let's do a nice lunge and half split on this side. So we'll rock back and forth in the low lunge. Maybe it's here that you grab your blocks. Lower the left knee to the mat, finding 90 degree angles, more or less with both legs. And then walk the hands up onto the right thigh. Nice and upright, engaging the glutes and the quads, kind of scissoring action. And then maybe you sweep the arms up Engaging the belly, gaze goes up. A few breaths here, strong legs, a lot of effort, but no movement, just wiggles. Inhale and exhale, part the hands out to the side and cactus. Inhale up, float the arms down to find those blocks. We'll tuck the toes. Back of the left knee goes up towards center. Planting the left palm this time, sweep the right arm up, twisting to the right. Replace the right palm down, lower the uh, left knee to the mat. I'll be in this runner's lunge. Maybe you work to bring the pelvis closer forward and closer to the mat. And then we'll draw the hips back, flexing the toe of the right foot back towards the face, finding half split. A few breaths here, working to draw the hips in line with one another by drawing the right hip back. Woo! Left hip forward. This is where you feel the stretch, maybe even on your outer right leg. That's where I'm feeling right now. All the way up from my ankle to my hip. Inhale, drawing forward to the runner's lunge. Maybe gaze goes toward the ceiling or just forward. That's good too. Exhale, fold over the leg. Half split. Inhale, lunge forward. Exhale, half split. Inhale, lunge forward. Tuck the toes. I'm going to do something a little different. 
just fast forward. So if you have blocks, move them out of the way. You're gonna plant the palms, find plank. Couple breaths here. Strong legs, strong belly, shoulder blades spreading across the back. Lower the knees, chest and chin. Slide forward through a cobra. Tuck the toes, seat back into child's pose, and then up, down dog. Take three breaths here, maybe you soften the gaze. Flutter the eyes open if they were closed. We're going to look forward and step towards the front of your mat, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. So let's just hang out in this fold for a second. You can re-bend the knees as much as you need to feel comfortable. And grab opposite elbows. Let the head hang heavy. Let gravity pull the head down to extend the spine. Maybe you feel your hips drawing up towards the ceiling. Now unclasp the elbows and clasp them the other way. Release the arms, walk the hands up onto the thighs, extend spine forward, help you up. Exhale, fold. Pressing into the feet, sweep the arms up, overhead, hands through heart center, down by the side. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant palms, step the right foot back. Find a nice, maybe 30 degree angle, diagonal on the right back foot. We're gonna engage the legs, press into the feet. You can either walk the hands up onto the legs or you can just meet me upright in warrior one. So you're working to bend the left knee forward so it comes directly over the ankle one day. Working to draw in the belly. And in theory, we're working to straighten and square our hips towards the direction of our left knee. So forward-ish. It's very difficult. I'm feeling a nice stretch through my right calf. I'm trying to press out to the outer edge of the right foot that's grounded back there. So inhale, stretch up. And exhale, we're just going to open out into warrior two. So you might creep your two feet out away from one another. Creates a little more space for the pelvis to stretch. And now the hips are really facing sideways rather than front. You extend the left arm forward, right arm back away from it. Maybe you even draw the two shoulder blades towards one another on the back. You draw up through the belly, engaging the abdomen. And do a little check in on the shoulders, lunging forward. See if you can draw them back so they're over the two hip bones. Gaze soft over the left hand. Straighten the legs, bring the feet parallel, and extend the arms up overhead. Bring the hands to the center, find the hips. And you can bend at the knees, let's fold forward between the legs. And I kind of like to bend into one leg and then the other, waking up the groin, the inner thighs. And then maybe come to stillness. So this is not just a folding stretch, but this is also a test of balance. So maybe you can release the hands down and work rocking forward and back into the feet. Just see what it feels like to shift the weight. And do something a little different here. So walk the hands underneath the shoulders, nice straight spine. I'm gonna turn the left foot to face forward. Right foot kind of stays how it is. And we're just gonna walk the hands up to frame the front foot. That right foot comes up 
onto the toes, and we're in that low runner's lunge again. We're gonna replace the heel of the right foot back on the ground. We're gonna walk the hands up onto the right thigh, and we're gonna rest the left forearm on the bent left leg, sweeping the right arm up overhead, finding side angle. Just a different approach than we usually do. And here we're working to stack the right shoulder over the left, pressing into the outer edge of the right back foot. We're feeling the chest open up towards the right, the side. Keep the arm up overhead, you can look up, or you can kind of swing the right arm forward, down and forward, and look up towards the hand. Still working to press the leg away with the left arm, so we're not dumping in. That will turn on the belly. Still pressing into both legs strongly to support it. And then we're going to work our way back up into warrior two. And checking in, see that the shoulders are stacked over the pelvis. Both arms stretching away from one another in different directions. And are your shoulders up in the ear? See if you can sink them down. Maybe even loosen up the arms. I need to walk my back foot in a little bit. But we're going to go into our triangle. So we're going to straighten the right leg or the left leg. We're going to shift both hips back towards the back right leg. And the arms can stay straight like we're in warrior two still. And we're just going to gaze forward, stretching the left arm forward, forward, forward as much as we can. And then we let it drift to somewhere on that left leg. Right arm sweeps up. Again, stacking right shoulder over left. Working to open the chest, this time to the right, engaging the belly, pressing into both feet. So we're just a strong structure. Pressing the feet come upright. Let's find warrior two, maybe the back foot creeps away. Settle in. And let's come up into this high crescent lunge, right foot. The toes are on the ball of the foot. We are on the ball of the right foot. Because... And let's sweep the arms down, finding the floor, step back into the plank. Easier said than done. Pressing the floor away. And the lower knees, chest and chin, thumb stays high. Lower the body down and through the shoulders. Vocal breath. Tuck the toes, hips back and up, down dog. Three breaths, maybe the eyes get soft. Next breath, open the eyes, bend the knees, look forward, and step, step to find the front of your mat. Halfway lift, hands to shin, straight spine. Exhale, hold. Inhale, press with your feet, sweep the hands and the gaze up. Exhale, hands down by the sides. So we're going to work through that on the other side. I'm just going to switch directions on my mat so I can talk at you instead of away from you. Feet firmly planted, sweep the arms up overhead. Inhale, exhale, hold. Inhale, halfway. Gaze is forward, spine is long. Exhale, fold, step the left foot back. So we're in your runner's lunge on this side now. Let the left heel find the floor, finding a diagonal angle. Pressing into both feet, you can walk the hands up onto the right thigh. And then you maybe sweep the arms up and warrior one. If this is too much, if this makes for cranky shoulders, or if you have a little back pain, you can stay with the hands on the thighs. If you want to turn it up a notch, find hands on hips. And hands on hips is good for everyone because you can kind of feel those two hips working to center forward. 
Breathing, drawing belly in. Fingertips going up if you're going down that root. So pressing firmly into both feet, maybe even pressing into the front leg allows that front knee, the right knee to bend even more. And we're just gonna open up to the side, finding more your chew, maybe the feet go away from each other, more space between them. Great arms forward this time, gaze is forward. Take a look at that right knee, see if it's tracking to the inner edge of your right big toe and try to, using your muscular strength, see if you can circle it outwards to the right. So you can see the big toe to the left of the right knee. Ooh. Breathing, shoulders down away from the ears. And we're gonna straighten the front leg, finding triangle, maybe you creep the back leg forward a bit. That's what I have to do. Stretching your right arm forward, left hips, left hips, both hips back towards the left back foot. Stretching forward, forward, forward until you have to drop your right hand to somewhere on your leg. Sweep the left arm up. Working for a straight spine. Stacking the left shoulder over the right. Gaze can be down towards the floor in the hand or can go towards the top left hand. Engaging the belly, pressing firmly into both feet. And we'll come back up, finding warrior two briefly. Sweeping the left arm, joining the right, facing forward, coming up onto the ball of the left foot, high crescent lunge. A few breaths here. Sweeping both arms down to find the floor. It's going to reunite the back left heel of the ground. Walk both hands up onto the right thigh, laying the right forearm onto the right thigh, and we sweep the left arm up overhead, finding side angle. <laughs> side angle. Again, working to stack the shoulders, but drawing the two shoulder blades together on the back so we're not collapsing into the right arm on the thigh. Engaging through the belly, still a nice long spine. And you can keep this left arm creeping up towards the ceiling, or you can swing it through center, down towards the floor, and up over the left ear. Still pressing to the outer edge of the back left foot. Feel a nice side stretch all the way from the fingers down to the left ankle. Pressing into both feet, spine warrior two. And I'm not gonna forget about feet coming parallel. Sweep the arms up. Exhale, fold over the legs to a wide leg before fold the other side. So your legs might be nice and bent, but that's okay. As long as you're feeling some sensation, back of the legs, hips. Might walk the palms back towards the line of your heels, pressing the palms into the floor, but trying to draw your, your head with a loose neck down towards the floor. You can engage the legs by lifting the kneecaps. Ah. All right, hands under the shoulders. We're gonna take a little pit stop here. So the same position, plant the left palm, sweep the right arm up to the sky, look up. And both palms down under the face, sweep the left arm up, look up, twisting open. And back down. Hands to the floor, spine is long, look forward. Exhale, hold. One more time, long spine, just going to point the right foot forward, crawl the hands back to frame the right foot coming into our low lunge. And both arms step 
All right, so back in the plank holding here. And knees, chest, and chin. Through the low cobra, inhale. And exhale, tuck the toes, hips back. Hips up, down dog. Three breaths here. And after three, bending the knees, gazes forward, step up to the front of the mat, palms to shins, halfway lift, long arms straight back. Exhale, hold. Press into the feet, sweep the arms out and up, look up. Exhale, hands to heart center, down by the side. Do a quick balance. Just do a little tree. So I'm just gonna reorient on my mat so you can see me. I hope you can see me. I'm going to spread my toes really wide on my left foot. So I'm feeling similar type of contact on the sole of my foot as we were focusing on the palm of the hand when we were first working and tabletop in our warm up. Now I'm going to bring my right foot into a little kickstand, so it's still on the floor, just so I can feel what it's like to shift the weight into the left standing leg. I'm gonna work to bring the right hip down in line with the left, rather than up. Drop the belly in, engaging the legs, and then maybe Ooh, that right hip, the right foot slides up onto the left calf. The hands can stay on the hip, or they can draw up to the sky. Maybe your gaze goes up to the ceiling. Definitely feel a little sway, maybe a little wobbling. So a little breathing. And the next challenge, so bring your gaze back forward, hands to the hip, and I'm gonna ask you to draw into the belly, draw the knee forward and up. And catch the knee with both hands, draw it in towards the chest. So the left leg's starting to get tired. <sighs> left hand to the hip. Right arm's gonna guide the right knee open. Ooh. Still working to keep the right hip low. And you can stay like this or you can draw the right foot to the inner left thigh. Hands can stand hips or find each other in front of the heart or go straight up. <sighs> Take a few breaths you determine your final evolution of tree is going to be. And then we'll gracefully try and exit that pose. Step the right foot down, shake that. Other side. Now I know what we're doing is spread the toes wide on the right foot. Nice sole to mat contact. Maybe even bend the left, the right knee a little bit. And the kickstand with the left foot. We're pressing the pelvis forward a little bit, feeling both hips in line, keeping the left hip low this time. That'll be our full priority. Engaging the belly, feeling the spine lengthen. Hands and hips. Maybe you draw the left sole of the foot onto the right calf. Still using all those stabilizing engagements, belly, hips in line. Strong legs, draw the kneecap up on the right foot. Hands can stay at the heart. Hands can go the way up. Gaze can follow. Don't forget to breathe. See if you can lengthen the breast. Maybe it's helpful to press the left foot into the right standing leg to bring everything into center. Draw the gaze and the hands back down in front of you. Reorient the left leg to 
front of you, drawing into the chest with the help of the hands, still lifting up out of the standing right foot. Right hand to hip, left hand guides the left hip open to the side, the left side. You stay like this, or grab the left ankle, draw the left sole to the side of the right standing leg. Stay like this, hands to heart, hands to the sky, maybe gaze follows. Maybe it's helpful to press the left foot into the engaged, strong, standing leg, right thigh. Engage the belly, long, mellow breath. And grace to legs it. She got the right leg. All right, I'm just gonna check the time. Oh, that's time. Just kidding. All right, we're gonna do a quick little bring it down to the floor, letting the knees sit on the bum. Stretch both legs out in front of you. Bring a nice bend to the knees so you can feel those bony parts of your butt, even if it has to go through a lot to feel the floor. You sweep the arms up overhead and just drape the torso over the legs. Maybe the feet start to creep out, but if you do that, you don't want any space between the torso and the thighs. Trying to keep a nice long spine looking forward. I got nice bent legs here, and I'm feeling a great stretch on the back of them. And breathing. And then once you feel like you really can't take it anymore, you can let the head Hang heavy over the legs. Relax your legs. All right, walking hands back up towards the torso. And I'm gonna have you lay on your back. Feet underneath the knees. They have maybe two widths a fist, two fists between them. So they should more or less line up with the hip bones, same as when we're standing. You should be able to graze the backs of the um, ankles with your hands. You're gonna plant the palms into the floor on either side of you, press the feet into the floor, engage your legs, and just lift the hips up. A nice diagonal from the knees down to the face. Still working those feet into the ground. Maybe you're able to tuck the shoulders underneath the back, under the chest. Still pressing the feet up or the feet down and feeling the hips go up as a consequence. Working to draw the knees more towards center and forward rather than laying them bow out or collapse in. One more breath, maybe the hips go higher, glutes engage. And exhale. Let the low back find the mat, maybe rock back and forth. Let's do one more. Back to neutral. Press the palms, press the feet, and lift the hips. You can stay here, you can tuck the shoulders, maybe hands find each other and make a basket underneath the hips. If that's the case, you can use the upper arm bones to press into the floor. Still pressing the feet to the floor, still feeling the hips lift up. Still breathing. And at least the hands, if they're bound, lower the top, middle, and low back. Let the knees drop to either side, windshield wipers, sliding the low back. Now draw the knees into the chest, wrap the arms around them. Maybe you bring the forehead up to meet the knees. Rocking side to side. Very, very, very quick core. All right, we'll do bicycles. Efficient, intense. Hands behind the head. We're gonna extend the right leg long. Draw the right elbow across to the bent left knee. Now switch. Right knee, left elbow. Right elbow, left knee. 
left elbow right knee. All right, we're gonna start steaming this up. <laughs> Standing long, leg long. Ooh. Working to get up off our shoulder blades. Engaging belly. Then we'll do six more on each side. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And draw everything in. Relax. Rocking side to side, massaging the low back. If you let the knees go out away from you, you can make contact our places. All right, let the feet find the floor. Let the arms straight open to either side and let the legs fall to the floor to the right. Gentle twist. You come up over the left shoulder. Maybe close the other. Slow the breath down. Drawing the knees up through center, gaze through center. Both knees now drop over to the left, gaze goes to the right. Eyes can be soft. Up through center, bring the two soles of the feet together, and both knees can drop out to either side. If you don't like this, you can just fast forward to final resting pose with the legs long, diagonal away from the body, feet wide. Or if you're joining me in the Supta Konasana, this recline about angle pose. Down butterfly, or just refine butterfly. Just allowing gravity to work on the weight of your leg bones. Stretch the hips and the inner thighs. So working to lengthen, just chill out the breath. You're in this reclined angle pose. You can stay as long as you like. Or if that was your effort and you're ready to truly relax, you can use the assistance of the hands to bring the two thighs together like you're closing a book. And walk the heels away from the torso, spreading the legs a little wide so it's comfortable. Arms can remain extended out. It can rest on the belly, the belly and the chest if you like to see how the breath moves through the torso. And of course, if you enjoy it, please feel free to close the eyes. Using your sense of hearing. Determine what noises are closest to you, immediate in the room. If you have a fan, some type of air or heating unit going on, Just detecting ambient noise nearby. And then expand the radius of detection. Do you hear any voices outside, lawnmower, brakes of a vehicle, birds overhead or in a tree outside? And 
let go of anything you think you hear. Bring all of your attention back to the breath, rising and falling at the chest and the belly. The sensation of the air coming in through the nostrils, down the throat, back up and out and through the nose. Hopefully this is comfortable. If there are any places in the body that feel tense, We think about directing the benefits of your intentional breath to those areas. Maybe that'll encourage a little softness, a little support. You can stay here as long as you like. Please don't be distracted by me bidding you goodbye. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you again next week if you're joining us live. Thank you so much for taking the time. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Again, I'm Adrian. Thank you for joining in. Namaste.